It's an excellent video, and I really recommend you get it. It documents a lot of my summer of legalization tour that caused the Americans to get very, very alarmed. We also know that after the Vancouver police failed to get me charged, in frustration, they handed the Emory file over to John Walters, U.S. Attorney John Ashcroft, and later U.S. Attorney, uh, Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, and then the U.S. DEA headed by Karen Tandy. Attached to this broadcast is a YouTube video of a retired police, Vancouver police officer named Doug Lang admitting all this at a Vancouver Public Library meeting where he said, quite to our surprise, that I had been investigated by Vancouver police and had failed, uh, they had failed to get me charged at the Crown Prosecutor's Office in Vancouver and that the file went right to the DEA. So this isn't speculation. These are all things we've verified. 6,000 pages of documents between our two governments. Uh, Doug Lang's statement, a former police officer saying that I was being investigated and that the file went to the DEA. In October 2003, with a Vancouver file on me supplied by Vancouver Police Chief uh, Jamie Graham to the DEA, the DEA began their own investigation. At this point, extensive communication began between DEA, the White House Drug Czar, John Walters, and Vancouver Police, the RCMP, the BC Solicitor General Richard Coleman, and the Canadian Ministry of Justice, headed up by so-called human rights activist Erwin Kotler, who later turns out to be a complete traitor to anything like human rights. As I have said, 6,000 pages of court correspondence by letter and email alone transpired over the next six years between these groups, all of it designed to determine how to most effectively stop my peaceful cannabis revolution, and most importantly, to stop me forever.